Welcome to the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. Welcome back to the ancillary component of the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. We're going to go ahead and do the teardown for the half inch ratcheting breaker bar adapter. Hopefully this will be quick and painless. I can't guarantee it. So the main access point for this particular piece is going to be right here. And the piece that I found the most useful doesn't have to be the Craftsman brand one by any means, but you're going to want to use the smallest, at least for the Craftsman brand, the smallest snap ring slash retention ring, ring compressor you've got, or pliers. And the main objective is to go ahead and get into this area right here. It may or may not be difficult depending upon what tool you use. You're not going to be able to get away with using any appreciably sized pair of pliers, whether they're straight or bent nose, because this access point is just too small. If you have a really small pair of pliers, then, then maybe, but so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to get in here, like so. Oh, I've had mixed... mixed success with this but with the tools that I've got available to me this was the best way for me to go do it so we almost had her there come on now there we are Oop. almost you may or may not hear sounds <laughs> in the background that's just my family doing stuff do not mind them. Oh man. Okay, round 10. Oh damn, we're getting there. The, the key is to get this thing compressed. And then once you've got this, Thing, then you gotta quick lift it out. So while I appreciate this particular tool's design, it is a bit of a pain in the butt to get loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna alter strategies and we are going to just, it's been a while since I've done this so There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. That was the key. Downward force. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> My wife gave me the raised eyebrow when I said that. Anyways, <laughs> let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. It's a little dark in here. Let's see if we can't get a little bit more light. There we are. That helped a little bit. Let's grab one of our picks, use it as a probe. So if you compare this situation with the round head fine tooth, you're gonna find some stark similarities. We've got a 45 tooth gear, and yeah, we've got some grease lubricant down there, but Imagine basically this round gear attached to a handle and it's the same exact idea. It's just encompassed in a, in a different way. This would essentially be the drive head of the round head fine tooth ratchet. So this is the father of that particular ratchet. So we've got our 45 teeth. We've got some depth for the rest of the housing, as well as down here, and we've also got the space where the retention ring goes. Now if we examine, we'll zoom out a little bit, the upper portion, the business end, go ahead and get the retention clip out of the way. Come on now. If I remember correctly, going backwards is almost just as fun as getting to this point. Hooray! There we go. 
So here, if we pull down on this little directional ring, that should pop right off, as well as the bearing. Thankfully it didn't go flying in some weird direction. So this piece right here, this is the switch for your direction. And this only has, compared to the roundhead fine tooth, which has a three tooth engagement. As you can see, we'll zoom in a little bit. This one just has two. So its action isn't as refined. You got one, two points of engagement right there. Same on the other side. And it's missing one of the dual poles as well. So essentially, the way this is maintained and functions is the exact same as the round head fine tooth minus the extra teeth right here and the other other corresponding paw. So what you do is you can remove this little stud to get access to your your paw right here. And it's a part of this drive shaft I don't think we're going to get too great of a view of it because I like hyper lubed everything. This one was a, a bit of a bear to deal with in terms of cleaning it because it had not been cleaned in 50 some odd years. So here's where the, the spring and the bearing are seated. Let's go ahead and take a look at that selector ring. So here we have the the selector ring, what happens is that little stud sits right in here. Come on camera, are you going to focus or what? Sits right inside of here and it's shimmied amongst these two little ridges here. As you move it, that's what forces the selection. In the back here, that's where the bearing sits. That gives you the snap action that you need. And of course we've got left and right, right here. So when you want to tear this thing apart, you'll just want to take it realistically as far as you need to because it's a pain in the butt to bring back together. But So you'll just want to go ahead and probably do this, get this out of here, clean it up, especially the point that it pivots, and then you'll want to clean the bearing and the spring. Because if that has a failure in it or it doesn't have the freedom to move, you're not going to make very good selections. <laughs> so let's go backwards here. Let's see if I can get this bad boy back together. I obviously did it once. Let's see if I can do it again. So we're going to go ahead. And I believe the way that I did it the first time was as I used a pick or something to push down this bearing Ooh, and I launched the bearing into outer space. And I would slide the, the ring over position. Okay, let's try an alternative plan here. All right, we'll try the tip of this, the tip of this guy right here. Okay, perfect. So far, so good. We still have our ratcheting action. What you want to do with, as with the round head fine tooth is you want to try and get this Paul into approximately a neutral position so that when you put this thing together there isn't anything that's gonna stop you from getting seated in here effectively now this is the fun part right here is when you slide this gear over this section and making sure that the retention ring is also in position it's oh so fun I mean it's a great I love this design I mean it's, it's really cool you know it offers it's a, it's a self-contained unit. You don't have to worry about snapping your selector off or anything like that, but it does require a little bit more of a commitment when it comes to getting things put back together. So let's see. Remember, this took kind of a combination of different tools. 
as I was doing it last time. I think I what I did is I pinched the pinched the snap ring or the retention ring, I should say. The issue is is keeping it seated right here. And then I think I Wow, nailed it. <laughs> I remember the first time I did this, it took me <laughs> like 25 minutes. I'm like, oh my God. So that's how you do it. So what you'll probably want to do to maximize your access is come in with your small snap ring slash retention ring pliers, whatever brand you want, compress the retention ring, pull out. If you want to do it, push down get your stuff out, do your maintenance, and grab probably what, what I just used was a bent nose pliers here, just so you can compress it in, slide it in, and you let it go. Right at the, the key moment, it didn't seem like I really had to time that very much to be effective, but you get the idea. So this piece is the Craftsman half inch drive ratcheting breaker bar adapter. I hope that if you've got one of these, you want to do some maintenance on it, it'll help you out.